All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us on our first episode of the USANA Start Something YouTube series where I have a chat with some of our world-class athletes about what they've got going on, what they've what what they're about to start, what they've started in the uh, past. So on today's episode, episode number one, I have my good buddy, and there we go, <laughs> my good buddy Alex Kopach, Olympic gold medalist, Crystal Globe winner, and maybe I. I'm not totally positive, but maybe my favorite bobsled athlete of all times. I mean, that's a stretch, but, but. since cool runnings, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, what's up, Alex? Thanks again for uh, for, for joining us today and uh, answering a few questions. Dude, it's no problem. my pleasure. Always awesome to uh, to have conversations with you. We've we've done plenty, so we're not really going to go into depth of Alex's career. Um, We've done that in a previous episode. So just check out the USANA channel and search Alex Kopach if you want to see some of the stuff we've done with Alex in the past. This one is just focused on starting something. So um, let's just jump right into it. Before before you start something with me, it gets personal. (laughs) First off, I have to say... You're looking <laughs> dapper, my friend. Love the uh, love the beard. Thanks. Um, like I told you earlier, I I, I whipped I mean, out the I, mustache. The mustache is you. slick, man. I wasn't thinking right. <laughs> you know the reason I have this. I I had uh, this this problem with my with my trimmer. The the blade broke, but not the blade. But like there's a part inside there that anchors yeah. the blade down when it goes back and forth like this, and that plastic part broke. So before I went on my recent business mm-hmm. trip. I did all the steps to get a replacement because it was within like six months it busted. It's one of these brawn multi groomer things, right? So it should be should be pretty good. The last thing that you expect to break. And it said it was in transit, it should be fast, like two day turnaround. It's been six weeks. I'm back. And this is maintaining because I can't I can't trim it the way I want to. So now I have to say, you know, do I leave it? I'm already so far across the, the river, the lake. Do I turn around, swim back, and start from zero, keep going, and see what happens? So I think I might just let it keep rolling, man. If your trimmer was working perfect, what look would you be going with right now? Well, I would just have it more kind of like a, just a little stubble, I think. Okay. Suits the okay. summertime. Right. More aerodynamic. Uh, but up in Canada, isn't summer still like negative 40? We don't say that word because that invokes potentially gotcha. the winter time. And anyone who does say it out loud in public, uh, if the cops don't get you, then locals will will throw things at you well, to try and you know appease. The, I'm not the gods a local, so. Summer. But but let's just forget. Let's just forget I said anything. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just let's just get cracking. Um, how did you get started in your sport? Well, you, know, it's, you get that question a ton over, over a lifetime. And, uh, and I think the thing that surprises people the most is I was asked to try it. And in many ways, I say that the sport chose me. So step one was that I was, I was in a position where I could be seen. And so I was, I was you know, doing my undergrad and I focused primarily on uh, education. Because after university was, or high school, there was a bit of a deal between my parents and I that, you know, we did a lot of cool stuff with sport in high school and now it's time to get serious. Um, and so I focused on that. A friend of mine took me to a gym where there was a discus thrower, an uh, uh, Olympian uh, named Jason Tunks, and he said, hey, uh, you're going to love this gym. And so there we are lifting. I think I had like cargo shorts on or something. I wasn't like prepped for an actual lift and we were going to do some, you know, deadlifts just to see. And he, my friend was curious. Um how much I could lift because I had never really tested myself that way. So I started putting weights on, weights on, hauling, hauling, hauling. It gets north of 650 pounds and I guess I beat this guy's record. And so that's when, you know, he sends him a video and the guy goes, who is this kid? He's super strong. Like, what's this all about? 
and um, meets me and he goes, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm just in school. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but what's, what are you doing in school? And I'm like, nothing. I'm just in school. And he's like, you're going to do track. I'm like, okay. So from there, now I'm on the track team. And with this guy, I got really strong, really fast. I got bigger. But the one thing that was really uh, amazing to me is how much footwork and stuff we did and conditioning. And there was running elements to it. And you wouldn't think so for a thrower, but there's actually, I was, I was, I was, a, I was in fabulous shape being uh, 280 pounds. That's, that's when I was my heaviest. So really strong, has some good power, some explosion. So now I've made the, the track team at my university. And to top it all off, just for fun, I am, I am going against the sprinters at the end of training because they still, we started early, they kind of went later and I would just, you know, throw my running shoes and just run with them. And it got to a spot where any sprinter I beat, it was a game for me. Literally, I was playing. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to set any kind of record or anything. Um, so there'd be a couple of like so-called inter-squad meets, purple and white. We called it. They split the, the the whole team into white team, purple team, and and away we go. And uh, I remember the first one I did. Um, I, I didn't even know what kind of shoes to get. I got some like I, they were they weren't even the right type of spike. It was something for like either a high jump or like a long jump spike, super flexible. Like you'd never buy that if you were serious. And I got someone to show me like, how do I kind of get out of the blocks? They're like, okay, you kind of do this. Well, I, I came in the top eight. That means I beat a ton of sprinters, like, like guys that were there for sprinting. So that's the thing where it's like, that's not supposed Dude, to really happen. I, and then the next year I made the men's sprint. Standard I don't, as well. I don't mean to interrupt, but that had to really infuriate some people especially if they were there on oh. scholarship and here's this big dude who has <laughs> no right being there mopping mopping up the track Ooh. Ooh. oh yeah oh yeah no it was amazing it was amazing it was it was it, and of course of course just had a great time watching everyone's like hooping and hollering and it was just like it was it was fun it was a lot of fun um and that's when people start saying, like, you're way too athletically talented. Like, you should consider doing football. And so I was getting pushed to try and, you know, play for, for the university team. And then one of the old spring coaches, he did Bob Slay back in the early 2000s. And he's like, dude, you'd be a freak in that sport. Like, they're all guys like you, especially these big dudes out of Germany. They find them out of who knows what hole and what cave. And they <laughs> pull them out and unleash the box. And they... I'm flying out and bang, you know, they, they, they crack some of the fastest starts you've ever seen. And, um, so I was like, okay, like, let's, let's see, how do you, how do you get into that? Because like, that was the year leading up to the Sochi Winter Olympics, right? So it turns out, Balsley Canada sends out invites to every university, like the strength coaches, uh, for whoever. And then you have, um, a series of points where everyone groups up. And so the first point was in uh, McMaster, in a town called Hamilton, not far from me. Uh, that was the first tryout based on those results. So like, okay, you need to lose 30 pounds and it turned out to be like three months. You need to run a little faster um, and then go to Calgary. So I hit those targets and then kind of everything just started rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. So I started doing this because I didn't know I couldn't do it or could do it. And so I said, let's, let's give it a shot. Um, so if I didn't have that timing, that luck, of course, I was physically prepped for the opportunity, but if I didn't have that stuff where it needed to be, it, it would have never turned into That's anything. crazy. So when you first started, were you like the best or did it, did it take, I mean, obviously like you hit a point that uh, I don't think most people think about. You were at the right place, the right time. Um, but yep. you were also pretty prepared for something like that because you were already conditioning as a, a collegiate athlete anyways. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but how was that progression for you getting to, I mean, you were the world champion, right? The goal, uh, gold Olympic gold medalist. So there was yeah, nobody better than you at the time. It's a really the intense journey. It's, it's crazy. And like, I started from a spot where, I mean, I was, I, I felt that I belonged at the very least, but it stunned me how athletic these, these men were. It blew me away that they were, they were super strong, like from like bench press to squats and they were fast, like really fast. 
And I mean, we do a lot of things like, I mean, internationally, a lot of people are doing things like in, you know, in meters and stuff. So hard for me to do a quick little conversion, but like a sprint standard for us is like, you're like your world class and you'd be potentially one of the best brakemen in the world. Like you have to run your 30 meters in 3.6 seconds. And so, I mean, a person who can do the quick conversion is to kind of get how close is that to a 40 yard dash. But like we blow up the NFL combine. Absolutely. Now, whether or not we can play football, that's a different game entirely, but the athleticism, the raw athleticism, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. So, um, yeah. And basically once I got there, started to get my bearings about me. The reality is you have no opportunity to really rise unless you're in a position where somebody wants you to. So then therefore, what do we do? Well, we're left with making the choice of saying, how do I give myself the best things that I need to reach whatever heights I have? Because I was so curious by this, what is my physical potential, right? What, what, what's in my blood, in my genes? Um, so by the end of my first uh, kind of uh, you know, tour, I'm like, I know I need my own coach. That has to happen. I need someone that's going to be invested in me, who's going to give me time, who's going to, you know, want me to succeed exclusively. And then with that thought, it came to how else can I get more of this support? And so you start looking at like, how do you, how do you find your own massage therapist, for example? Like there's certain things that you just need. If you don't have that, if you don't have a good pit crew, <laughs> you're kind of toast. So, you know, as, as I kept moving on, I started to, to attract the right people. Again, it was a timing thing, and you know, likewise, it's not just a one-sided thing. They had to like me too. And then you got to start thinking about like how much financial risk are you willing to take. Um, but the thing that changed my life, the thing that that completely set that on a gold medal path, was when I met my my coach, my German coach Olaf Humpel, um, two-time gold medalist back in his day. He competed. 80s retired in you know 1999 i think he, he may have done a little bit more up until 2000 but but that was his that was his heyday so he was at the 88 olympics for his first games and then 94 wins a medal and 98 wins a medal so it'd been nagano and little hammer and i didn't even know this guy was a medalist that's, like, that's medal. part of the story it wasn't until the I end of my first really summer cool is the fact that oh. you didn't you didn't go yeah. to him because Humble. he was a two-time gold medalist you only found out no. after you'd been training with him and you saw the gold medals at his house right or or his wife showed you or yeah, something exactly right no that's exactly right his wife's like oh alex do you know what those are over there like what what are those kirsten she's like mm, go look <laughs> <laughs> like okay take a look like hey those are pretty you got olympic rings on them because the the one from nagano is uh like the black sands oh, right cool. it's kind of trapped inside and there's some gold on the outside, but it's yeah. not like, boom, gold in your face. And the one from Lillehammer, it's like the granite or the stone from, from Lillehammer. Wow. So it's like this beautiful marbled looking, but, but again, there's a little bit of gold on the outside. They're gold medals. I went, what? That's crazy. <laughs> we did all sorts of things, man. I have, I have, I have, uh, and, and I know Jason, you've seen them, but like some of the footage, like he used to use this old uh, camcorder to do video analysis. And then it came a point where I'm like, hold on, technology is better these days. And so I started figuring out how do I set up a little tripod with our phones and how do I link our phones together so we could see it on his to press play as, as a, you know what I mean? We, all sorts of cool little techie things that we, we, we try to adapt. I mean, the things you do on a, on a, on a shoestring budget, I mean, like when people talk about bootstrapping, whether it's a company or something else, like you got to know what that means. It's like you have to do things that a person with 10 times or 100 times the budget would do in a way that you can actually get results from that isn't going to cost you anything if you can if you can do that um but that was the secret sauce, and i think man. that's him. a great point i mean i think people they like to make excuses sometimes we all do it we all do it because to be an elite athlete it takes a lot of dedication discipline right and and as much as we want to tell ourselves, oh, we've got that discipline. I mean, this, this also, this is in, if you want to be an entrepreneur, this is, is the same thing, right? But it's so easy for us to say, ah, if I had more money, I'd be better. Oh, if I had a gym mm -hmm. I could go to, I'd be better. Oh, if I had a sauna oh. in my basement or this or that, right? Like there's always excuse after excuse after excuse. You, you could. 
But Jason, what, to, to, to double down on that, it's, it's yes, there's always the excuses. And it's okay to be thinking you want more, yeah. but then do it. Make one. How can you make a sauna in your basement? Buy some wood. How much can wood cost you? How much, you know, like that's where the creativity is like beautiful because like you can emulate each one of those pieces. Well, short of the money thing, if you're not lucky, but each one of those pieces, you can emulate it. If you, if you're clever enough, if you just use your imagination, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, and it's funny you bring up the pit crew thing. People don't know this, but because of your body type. So let, let's take a few step backs. Uh, a, a, stu- a few steps back. So you are um, a, a, an unbelievable athlete and not everybody has has been gifted the body you have. Now that, in my opinion, that doesn't make you a gold medalist, right? There are so many layers that go into that. So much, so many things that you, that you gave up. So many, you know, like there's a lot of layers, but you were gifted with a pretty amazing body. And for a guy who's as big and strong as you, you are really fast, which, you know, obviously lent to somebody saying, Hey, why don't you try this? Hey, why don't you try that? And, uh, and then there's me saying, Hey dude, you should jump over the wall on a race team. Um, you know, cause those guys <laughs> are carrying big tires, yeah. you know, and it helps to be fast. So you have, you have probably been um, maybe thrown a few opportunities because of your size and your speed. Mm-hmm. But I don't want people to think that that's why you have what you have. Because you're fast because you worked your butt off to get fast. You're strong because you worked your butt off yep. to get strong. But... You're tall because you have good genes. So. <laughs> totally. You know, gravity functions different in my house. You know, I, I try as I might. I can stare at the mirror every day and do as many mental reps and visualizations and, and combing, but I'll never have I know. a mustache as good as yours. But let's not make it about me. This is about you. Um, yeah. Right. It's about my body. Exactly. About my body. So, um, so with all that being said... <laughs> Was there ever yeah. a time that you felt like quitting? Oh my God. Like, well, I'll say, okay, there's, there's kind of a, a, a double-edged sword. And so it's not, it's not, it's not all negative, but the, the thing that a lot of people don't understand about me. And, uh, I, I'd like to think that I, I come across as a, as a friendly guy. I know that if I'm walking and I have more of like a, if I'm thinking, I have more of a stern look, and so I might be a little bit more unapproachable. When a person gets to know me, though, I'm a I'm a very friendly friendly guy. I um, I'm very I'm a very intense uh, competitor. Um, you know, ferocious might be a good phrase for it, but the way it manifests itself is I so much rage associated with me doing something. I'm going to take you down and I'll give you actually just, um, it's, 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 this story is meant more to make people laugh at how uncontrollable it can be in me. And I know that I identify it. So I have to like literally put it in a box and never touch it again because I could destroy my body if I, if I, if I don't get, get, get a handle on it. But guys letting us stay at their place and, uh, and, and there's, there's, there's nothing wrong, right? Like he, he's, he's a very, very, very friendly person. Um, we couldn't have done half the things we did there without him. Uh, last night, it's just me and him, and uh, he, he even wanted to play a game of ping pong. I like ping pong, but I'm not like a mega pro. Um, good reflexes, whatever. I like the pacing of the game. I like some of the kind of tactical things you can do. So the guy starts like rinsing me, like blowing me up. Like we get to 11-0, and he says there's this rule like, oh, sorry, I skunked you, so we have to start again. And I'm like... We're going to 21 or nothing, man. Like, I'm not, I'm not interested in, like, you're done. Like, because we got to 11. Like, so, so far, the score starts getting closer and closer and closer. But as they get closer, he starts pulling out more of, like, these, these kind of pro shots. In total, dear reader, I lost six games straight. And by game four, I was livid inside my body, inside my mind, outwardly to my host. I'm like, dude, you make that shot again, I'm going to put a hole in your wall. 
because he was popping them right off to the side and there was no room to reach. And I'm like, why are you, why are you doing that? And now I'm starting to get sharper with my language. I'm starting to get more heated. I'm like, I promise you, man, if we ever do a physical game, like for example, <laughs> basketball, I will dunk on you every chance I get. I will never, rem- I will never forget this night. And then afterwards we jumped in the river to cool off. It was silent, silent on the way back in. And I was sitting there fuming in bed and I'm like, Dude, it's bog. Relax. Like I, I couldn't believe it. it's like so. So when I was there in the zone, I had people that were Alex. You don't belong here. You don't whatever. Then bang, 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 bang. I'm coming after each and every one of you guys. So where does that put me? Well, I was in positions where I was in tremendous amounts of pain, and I pushed myself through it, and I got up and I kept going because I was hell bent on not being stopped. Um, not a healthy place to be. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. There's a lot of baggage that comes with that, but I've seen that firsthand. Um, it's firsthand. <laughs> it's what gets me there, you know? And it's like, yeah. And so for me, I, I try to distance myself from, from it. So for example, like, uh, okay. I mean, you know, Jason, you and I can engage in a, in a, in a friendly game and, and let's say, let's say I'm, I'm outstanding at it. I've always, I always have the mindset where I'm not, I don't, I don't need to embarrass you in it. I will play at your level in a way that we're, we're enjoying the game. I don't need to win. I don't need that anymore. I've proven enough in my life. I don't need it. But when you meet someone that needs it, all of a sudden, boom, that button goes on and I go, you're not getting that with me, buddy. Like that, if you think that's what's happening, it's not happening. But you know what could have happened with that ping pong story? Had I been in a, in my younger years, I would have practiced daily after that till the next time I saw him and I would have made him eat those words. That's crazy. You need a level of lunacy when you do these things. I mean, being a bobsledder, that's crazy enough, right? But like you're dealing with cold, extreme discomfort, pain, injuries, open wounds. You still got to keep moving. You're the only one there. So you got to lift all this stuff and put things in the truck and you're driving 12 hours after the race and the next race starts like... It's it's never ending, and so my fuel, my jet fuel, was was rage. Put the metal on, and let's let's do this. Let's hurt ourselves. Who's willing to hurt themselves more? I dare you. You know that's kind of the space because I used to watch these other guys. Some of these 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 pros are like, oh, oh, I'm not feeling it. my hamstrings a little. Mm, I think I'm just gonna sit out. And I'd be like, I'll take yeah. his rep. I'll take his rep. I'm good. I'll do another rep. Who else wants to sit? Out? I'll take his rep too. You don't want to eat your food? Give it to me. I got it. I got stomach for all of you. But like, did I ever feel like like quitting? I, I felt like there was moments where I don't know if I was ever going to come back. Like there's one really bad injury I had in 2016 where it took me out for half the season, almost the entire year. And then I was forced to come back probably prematurely, but they had this like awkward financial pressure on me. So I come back for world champs and everyone says, and even the, the, the commentator, well, it looks like he's just not as good as he once was. You know, they're wondering if your level will be good again. And like, you know, it's just it's just talk, but it's like yeah. it still gets in your head. And you know that your teammates are judging you. And you know your coaches are judging you. And the next year, well, it's the Olympic year. And so you haven't been around and you showed up. And you're not as good as people thought you were going to be. Well, once again, dear reader, I said, watch this. And then that next summer, I went with even more fury. And I became the best brakeman in the world. Touched the sun for a moment, but I touched yeah. it. Just, you just needed that moment. Yeah. Well, for better <laughs> or for worse, I got it. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Um, let's jump ahead a little bit. So you're retired. So what's next for you? What, you know, this whole, this whole program's about starting excellent, something. Excellent what are you going to start then. next? Yeah. Well, since I retired, there have been a series of starts. Um, I was thrust into public speaking, um, as one is post-Olympics. Um, but the last thing I imagined is that it would work out so positively where I'm in a space now where I can start more of a more of official public speaking business as opposed to just taking gigs kind of randomly. Um, that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for people that I met post or even prior. Um, even having the opportunity to be in a in a high pressure uh, pressure scenario uh, like with the USADA convention, 
it's not it's not trivial jumping up on stage in front of tons of people and hoping that you're not going to you know stumble on your words or say something dumb. You know, that was a trial by fire that who gets an opportunity like that? You know, that helped me start thinking that I can maybe do this. And that led to a TEDx talk, which some of you people helped support me with that. You know, like, it was amazing. And I'll, specifically, you know, I'm going to name him, Mark Plesher. It was awesome how, how pumped he was because he thought he had a, I had a good story. And he's like, you know what? I think you, you can actually do this. Um, I mean, obviously, it goes without saying you and I are talking, but, you know, Mark, Mark was cool, really cool about that. Um, and then I, then I was floundering a little bit in my life and I was trying to like figure out what am I doing? So I, I finished off my degree. Some courses didn't translate over from my time in Germany. Um, so, so that took me till let's say December. Then I jumped into an engineering job where someone made me director of engineering. Um, you know, started that lasted three months about. Um, again, there was some use of support there with, uh, with, uh, with Jim actually it was, uh, it was Jim also Brown. Cool. a lot of good tips and stuff. Yeah. It didn't work out. However, I went in as prepared as I could have been. Right. Cause he, he was wonderful with the time he gave me, like telling me what I was going to probably see and expect. Um, and, uh, and then, and then, yeah, then I, I did, I was a part of two different startups, not from the ground up, but kind of like, you know, as they were growing. Uh, didn't work out. And then I got to a place where, um, you know, medical devices again, whether they were spinal implants, there was this interesting company in the States. Unfortunately, the border closed down, so that didn't work. Um, and then I had athletes, um, actually it's immediately post Olympics start again, uh, being a coach. Cyrus Gray came up to me and he said, would you ever consider coaching someone? Him and I had no relationship prior. He was a guy that was like super slow behind the sled, looked athletic, but, but I'm like, no one's asked me yet. I'm like, okay, man, like, I don't know if I can do this. Happy to give it a shot. And I said, well, we'll keep an open conversation between each other. If it's not working, we'll switch. We'll do something else. I got to watch him, him, him grow up from the guy that I met, the, you know, the guy who was, who was, you know, no shot to, he's on the team. He had a place at that table. He was the best athlete. Uh, he, he had a fabulous personal best when came to the pushing, but you know, unfortunately it wasn't enough to crack the top, top guys. Um, but he's sticking around to do another four years. Um, and he has a fabulous base. You know, he grew so much from that. Another athlete came to me the year after him and I started Sarah Villani. She, same thing. She said, you know, I'd love to learn from you. Okay. She represented our country or our country, my country, um, in the Beijing games, watching her develop from where she was to where she is now is amazing. And the future, I think she wants to still continue doing the sport, but she might jump into the pilot seat. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, that, that right there was an unbelievable mini journey within these other mini journeys. Um, goodness. I mean, and then of course, like now, so what's the big now? Well, you know, the pandemic was a surprise for all of us, you know, as a world, we all suffered together. Um, I decided to start my own company at the end of those startups. I thought, no, that's it. It's the last time I let someone else control my destiny. I had enough of it through sport, had enough of it through, you know, some of the classic job positions. And I said, I think I got what it takes. I had a lot of people that were kind of giving me this confidence and these ideas that you can do this. So I said, I'm doing it. So I reached out to an old friend of mine. Um, he, his, his, his journey, uh, we've known each other since we were actually 13. Um, he did more like finance, accounting, HR, and then my background's mechanical engineering and then degree in physics and sport. And so it's like, okay, so we got some strong branding power here. We have, uh, an, a product that's novel to North America that we can maybe get some good traction and find ways to make gains on that. And so having those connections through Germany to, to kind of keep that part rolling, um, was amazing. And so, so we started, you know, we started and we, and we, there is, yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. There are good days and bad days in one day. You can have an amazing morning and then a phone call and your day is like ruined and you're like, Oh, we're, we're screwed. It's over, man. And then like in the evening we get an email that's like, Oh, like we're going we're gonna to be great. Like <laughs> it's going to work. It's an insane yo-yo. And I think it's, it's so different from sport because I can't, I can't muscle my way through this. 
it's a game of finesse. It's a game of patience. Game of again, well, creativity. So this is a common point, and you know that whole grit and all that other stuff. But but I'll tell you this: like grit, mental fortitude, and all that. It's a different beast when um, you can't use your hands. I use my anger to power my body through problems. What do I do when I'm stuck with a problem that no matter how much I wish to punch my computer screen won't change a damn thing? You know, so that's, that's been its own thing. Became a dog dad. <laughs> There's so much I did in four years. It's kind of crazy to even think back. Like, what well, the heck I like, happened? I like what you said about how you wanted to control your... Dude, going, going with the, the, yeah. the volunteer yeah, that trip. That was awesome. That was awesome. But like, my God, to, I, I want to go back just a little bit and then we'll wrap this up. Um, I've already taken up enough of your time, but I like what you said about taking your own destiny in your hands. Um, and, and, and that's why you created your own company that, that that's really cool. I mean, that's the entrepreneurial spirit, right? That's what, uh, that's what everybody wants to do. Um, but with that, you know, taking that risk on what are some of the challenges that you've had to face? I mean, you've, you've talked about some of them. It's not always easy, um, but totally. is it rewarding at the end of the day? Because, I mean, just like sport, I'm sure there's times that you felt like you wanted to quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, when you look at, like, legacy, what are you going to leave behind, right? So um, I had a really close call with, uh, with with COVID, and then it really kind of put a lot of things in perspective in my life. So I'm in a position now where, yeah, you know, money comes, money goes. But um, the one thing that you can leave behind is a thing where people said, like, you built that. I feel like that's something that really calls to me. And to do something that will help people feel less pain is a, is a massive bonus. I mean, I have so much chronic pain now from all that, all that red zone anger game. Uh, it's, it's cool to know that I might be able to give someone some more comfort in their, in their lives. Um, customer service, like the things you'll, you'll run into, uh, people don't want to pay. They'll, they'll be trying to like get some kind of, you know, uh, 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 I, I have people be like, Oh, I'll just send them back to you. I want a refund. And it's like, you know, we're, we're doing this, this, this like a custom insole with like sensory motor points to kind of get more muscle activity, stuff that I used as an athlete that I thought was just phenomenal. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with that? Repackage it, send it to someone else. It's made yeah. to your foot. Like, how do you navigate that and not in a way that it like ruins your day, your week, your whatever. And you go like, oh my God, we have so many outstanding uh, invoices from some people. And it's like you're chasing and chasing and chasing. And it's like, you start to feel like maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe this is never going to fly, you know? And the hardest thing is to kind of separate that thing between you got to do what you got to do to feed yourself. And if a person doesn't understand that, well... You know what? Forget them. You got You need to keep doing this. They don't understand that because they've never been in that position. Now, the cool thing, I have had some amazing people give me the time of day because they're like, what are you doing? Oh my God, that's amazing. I remember when I started my first thing. And then just like that, they're willing to give you so much help and support because they yeah. know how hard it is. They know how much it sucks. And they're never asking for, oh, but that'll cost you. Oh, you owe me a favor now. Nothing to do with it. Because they remember they couldn't pay anyone back back then. So, you know, that gives me hope and humanity. Whereas the customer service side gives me... Ulcers. Uh, assurance that humanity is lost. <laughs> Double-edged sword. <laughs> you know, troubleshooting yeah. little tech things that come up, you know, putting together like the, the box of the kits. How is someone going to look at it? What are they going to feel? D did, it, did it matter how they felt when they saw it? Is that a waste of our time? Should we... You know, it's, there's so many amazing little things that you never even thought about when you actually go and buy a product and it's in your hands and you go, well, and you just throw this part away, but you keep this part. It's just like, there is so much thought that goes into every step. So that's a lot of amazing points. Appreciate you going into this. Um, I think the way I want to end this start something series with, with our athletes is with is with this question what's one question you wish people would ask you but they don't it's a tough one i wish okay so i, I wish people asked me more often than not um 
how I am. Like truly, how are you? Because there's a lot of times where I'm not okay. And it, it happens. And it's a very human thing. And I feel it. I feel myself more at odds within myself when I used to do what I used to do. and Just always like, oh, I'm great. Things are great. Things are great. And it, it got worse for me as time went on. But how am I doing? How am I actually feeling? Um, I think people should ask each other that more often. You know, the thing that people see in me is they see this big meathead. The last thing people are expecting is that he's a ballroom dancer. He's a lover of classical music and jazz. He loves being outside. He likes to create. You know, like there's all these these things. I'm I'm an, I'm a deep nerd inside. You can ask me anything about any type of nerd culture. <laughs> I dare you. I probably if I don't know all the details about it, I know about it. I I doubt there's something that's like snuck under my radar. You know, movies, sci-fi flicks, video games. Like my goodness, I I love imaginative things. It's like maybe it's escapism for all I know, but we all have our vices, don't we? I love seeing the power of our imaginations. So I appreciate the time. Appreciate everything that you do for USANA. I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, great stuff in here that, uh, that people can, can look at, analyze, and, uh, and, you know, and, and take it to their you daily know, life. You know what we're missing? What was that? You know what we're missing? We're missing uh, the, the tortilla, tortilla challenge. challenge. Is that like, is that a social media thing? Where That's where you drink some water, I drink some water, and we slap each other in the face with tortillas, whoever loses rock, paper, scissors. And the first person to laugh and spill out their water All right. loses. Well, next time I see you. Looks like a riot, especially when it's like a group of three or four. Next time I see <laughs> you, we're doing that. Maybe we could do it. We could do it with like the the, the Usana uh, health pack, the strips. Like, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm down, man. Again, Alex, thanks for your time. You're uh, you're you're an, you've been an amazing ambassador to Usana, um, an awesome friend, and uh, really appreciate everything you do for me personally as well. Thank you. Stop out the